Hello again, Kate Brown Pernia for Why Not a Hat. I've got a little touch of spring fever today. We've had some really nasty, cold, sleety weather last week, and now the sun's come out and it's going to be 60 degrees today, so I'm thinking spring. First, let me talk to you a little bit about the little hat that I'm wearing right now. This is a recent uh, production and it's made from some things that I think I've told you before. I have a friend, Nancy, who's a real thrift shop maven and finds wonderful, wonderful things. And also people give her things and then she gives things to me. So this hat is a beautiful green Czechoslovakian fur felt. Uh, the label in it said Czechoslovakia. I know it doesn't exist anymore. I guess it's the Czech Republic or something now. But anyway, it's a beautiful, soft, um, thin felt, which was um, one of my favorite colors. And I also thought that the uh, flower that she found that I added to this hat was quite unique and interesting. So we're going to spend some time talking about flowers today. But let me just show you a few things about this hat and then we'll get started. This hat is a blocked hat. I blocked the, the brim on a vintage brim block that I had, as you can see. But the crown, I didn't have the kind of crown that I wanted for it, so I just free form blocked it uh, on a head block and then sewed the two, the crown and the, and the um, brim together. So the little velvet band covers the seam. Now this flower though, I thought was really quite interesting. I'd never seen one quite like this. First of all, you don't usually see a green flower, but um, I thought this was a lot of fun and I wanted to try to um, recreate a flower like this. Now what's intriguing to me about this flower is that it's, about, it's made with about five different kinds of fabric, some sheer, some crisp, and some crinkly. And this little center stamen I thought was very intriguing. I kept looking at it thinking, you know, it doesn't look like any of the stamens that I have in my collection. And then one day it hit me. It looks like Irish oatmeal to me. It looks like um, just that, not rolled oats, but the, um, the granular oats. And so I remembered that I had a can of these in my pantry, a very old can as it turns out. And this is what the can looks like. I pulled out some of the oats from this can. And as you see, the grains look very similar. So I got to work. First off, I took a collection of these, what do they call it? They call them granule, granule, steel cut oats. Okay, steel cut oats. And I have a lifetime supply here. I actually made oatmeal with these for breakfast one day and they were so stale that I had to um, retire it to my studio for craft work, not eating. But um, anyway, the way that I came up with to make a stamen like the one on that little flower is I took some of this oatmeal and then I dripped a blob of this Fabri-Tac glue into, I should have turned it upside down before, here we go, a nice little glob of glue in there Oops. And then I took a pin and just rolled that glob of glue around in the oatmeal. Now it'll take a minute or so for it to begin to solidify and dry up. And right now it's a bit large. But as you see, it's beginning to take form already. And while that's happening, I found this stem wire at the craft store. You can usually find it in the floral department. It's a very thin little lightweight uh, wire that's covered with green thread used for stems. So while the glue is soft, I just poked that stem wire right into the glob 
and continued to try to... Whoops! <laughs> I'm making a mess here. You might do well to do this on a piece of wax paper or something so you can clean up easier. Anyway, you get the idea. You have to give it a little time to dry, and I, maybe I have a little bit too much on here. Let me take some of that off. And remember, Fabri-Tac glue comes off of your hands with um, nail polish remover, acetone. So anyway, you get the idea. I'm not gonna wait for this to dry because I have one already dried to show you so we can move along with our project. Let me just wipe the glue off my hands. So here is one that I've already made. And you see how nice that works? And what I did was I made a little loop at the bottom of the wire and used masking tape to tape it to my table until it dried nicely. And then I took a little um, acrylic paint to uh, give it some color. Now, depending on the flower, you can choose different colors of uh, acrylic paint. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Let me show you some of the flowers I've made this week. The first one was an attempt to follow the hat, the green flower on the green hat with using experimental different pieces of fabric. And to be honest, I wasn't very happy with the way this one turned out because different fabrics react differently to the stiffener. And we'll get to that in just a moment. Anyway, the, the silk organza really was kind of a failure because it just won't behave. But, the, but this beautiful silk um, brocade that I found in Paris works beautifully. Now this one was a knit fabric and it, it also was pretty resistant to my techniques. But this polyester was nice. Anyway, so this was a starter. It just got me started um, thinking about, well, what kinds of fabrics might react well to this technique? So I had a couple of beautiful batiks fabrics that I had found, and this is what I came up with. I just love this one. And the cotton worked really well with the technique. I made another one just to show you a different color scheme. More batik. This one is a little light, a little less stiff than the blue one. I think the stiffer works a little bit better. But as you see, there's that silly stamen in the middle. Now let me show you how I got these petals to work. I'm working right now on another one. This one is also cotton fabric, but it's a, it's a wonderful African fabric that comes from Ghana. And um, I think the colors are so intriguing and the, uh, the fact that there's some pattern in it makes it very almost orchid-like, sort of exotic. So here's how the flower is actually made. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. I've showed you how to do the stamen. That will come in later. What I did was I cut a bunch of petals. I made two little patterns, a small petal and a large petal. And I cut 11 or 12 large and 11 or 12 small petals. Now, how do I get them to shape like this? Well, let me show you. I had to sleep on it. At first, I wasn't sure how I was going to do it, but I got came up with this idea. I bought some styrofoam balls and I covered them with aluminum foil like this. And I stuck a little barbecue skewer into it so that I could stick it like that. Now, what I did to stiffen the petals is really kind of fun. You take the petal and you pin it to the styrofoam ball. You can do several petals on a ball, I found. If the small ones, you can do as many as four. With the large ones, maybe only two. In which I'm only gonna do one here today. So, so I just use the narrow point at the top like that. Now, this is my PVA stiffener. And what it is is it's this fabric stiffening and draping liquid, which is PVA. It's kind of like white glue. And uh, I made a, um, a formula of three parts water to one part stiffy. 
put it in this jar. Now, where is my, keep a little jar of water handy. What I do is I take the, the solution and just paint it onto the, the petal. I like to get plenty in the very middle of the petal because that's where the real curve is. And you just soak the fabric with the PVA, with the stiffy. Now this does not take terribly long to dry because it's three parts water to one part glue. Make sure you get all those little edges though. Around the pins. There. And then you can just stick it in a jar and let it dry. Cover up your solution so it doesn't dry out. I'm trying to clean up my mess here. Now somewhere I have one that's already done that I wanted to show you. What did I do? Ah, here it is. So here is one that I did last night. And so it's already dry, as you can see. I'm going to take the pins out. and just peel it off the foil. And you see you have a nice crisp petal to make your flower. Now, what I did here is I took my large petals first and I stitched them together. Three, I, did, I started with three, then I added one or two more and did some stitching. I couldn't have just glued it but I didn't want to end up with a big blob of glue at the bottom of the um, flower because I'm going to be sticking a needle and thread through later and um, that could be difficult with too much glue. So what I did was I stitched the large petals and then when I got to the center of the flower where I start to use the smaller petals, I started using my Fabri-Tac glue. Now I've already glued, let's see, one, two, several in here, I'm going to add a few more and I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac. The center of the flower is where the pointy part of the petal goes. I just put a little dab of glue there. And press it down to let it dry. And you do one or two at a time. I'm going to do two because then I want to add my stamen and then put the last petals on after the stamen is in. You don't want to overdo the glue, just enough to make it see like that. Now, here is a stamen that I've already made and painted orange. I wanted to pick up a little bit of orange that's in this print. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom of this, but I'm also going to stitch it because I don't want to depend on the glue to hold the stamen upright, which is why I didn't want to have too much glue on the bottom of the flower. So let's just place this. And because this is wire, You can manipulate it a bit once it's dry. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute. And then we will finish. We will finish the center of the flower. Now, when I stitched the large petals together, <laughs> this is just giving me a hard time today. I left a piece of the thread hanging from the back so that I could go back and use it. So let me get a needle here. Now that I've got glue on my fingers, it's going to be a bit of a mess. But... I 
I'm going to come up from the bottom of the flower and try not to stab myself. There we go. You see what I mean about the glue? And sometimes I need to use my pliers to pull a needle through. Now what I'm doing is I'm looping the oh, looping the thread over that loop that I have at the in the wire at the at the bottom of the stamen. Lost my I spent all my time threading needles, it seems like. Let me get my thimble here. Oops. Good thing I have several. So I'm going to go back through the center of the stamen. I'm just going to take about two stitches. This one's extra hard, and I think it's because I started this flower last night, so the glue is good and dry. And it won't go through. So maybe the better thing to do is to do this all at once instead of taking a pause. Well, maybe I'll try another spot. Yeah, here we go. It's coming through. It just... I guess I could break the needle if I'm not careful. Well, in this case, I may just have to rely on the glue. Since the... Um, Needle does not want to go through all, all those layers of glue. Let me just put the, see if I can get the, oh well, I'll just cut it off and call it done. Yeah, see, I bent my needle. So there's the argument for not overdoing the glue. But anyway, the, st the, stem the stamen seems to be standing up now. So I'm going to add the last few petals, and we'll call it done. Again, you don't want to overdo the glue. What I want to do is cover up the bottom of the stamen here. With the last few petals. Now you could fool around with different shapes and possibly wrap some of the flower fabric around the bottom of the stamen. That's a possibility. I haven't tried that one yet, but why not? One more and I think we can call it done. So there you have it, an African flower. What do you think? Wouldn't that look pretty on a straw hat for spring? After all, why not a hat? <laughs>